My name is Senda and my teammates, Yuhui Dashana, Hai Chuan, and Chi. We'd like to bring up to you about educating the doctoral movie, Kwa Sha. Kwa Sha is a Chinese traditional treatment, and as far as Chinese and Americans are involved, they have very diff uh, distinct cultural difference. For Americans, they are very proud to be Americans simply because they are, and tend to think that they are higher beings simply because they believe in equality in all generations, genders, and races. And those, the, their population is protected by social welfare agency and unions and human rights activists. Uh, those organizations' objectives are clear and members are back to them strictly. And for Americans, they will make sure zeros, I mean, lose zero sum in achieving goals. On the other hand, they are very task oriented. Uh, even friends tend to uh, confront openly about, uh, openly about other party wrongdoing, wrongdoing without fear of a sour relationship. In contrast to Americans, or Chinese, they strongly, they, they, they're very proud of their rich heritage and history. Uh, they strongly believe in legends and treat heroes with high respect. Uh, in for their meaning of living is to uh, to give bright futures to their kids, uh, to to take care of their parents, and to bring high honor to their family and their clans. So uh, in Chinese context. <coughs> Saving face is the most important. There is a saying, men can live without face and tree can't live without bark. Uh, so they compromise and um, they compromise and to, to have a uh, good report for long term. So these are the some traits of Chinese and Americans it, uh, related to our case studies. So question will be um, spotlights the cultural conflicts between Americans and Chinese quite evidently. Uh, if, for our case studies, um, we will focus on, on what Americans think about Pasha and how uh, and how they oblivious to accept Chinese cultural value. So the first one gets sued by social welfare agency uh, as the child received Pasha treatment and which left several red masks uh, which looked like he was being whipped. Before going too far, let me introduce uh, important character plays uh, the cultural conflict. The protagonist is the Chinese migrant father. He's been living in the USA for eight years and he is trying to blend in as one of the American citizens. Uh, he is a successful game designer who works for this game, American game producer, also his best friend. Uh, this is his father. Uh, he vis <coughs> the father visits the family in St. Louis from China and he is English illiterate. As he quoted, he is a blind and a deaf in USA. So moving on, this is a little son. Uh, who, who was born and raised in America, and the boss son is his, his friend. So this monkey king, is, Sun Wukong, is a famous Chinese legend, and he plays a supportive role to portray the, Chinese, the father as a, uh, a, a faithful Chinese. A little background of our case study. Father, uh, both father and mothers are working during the entire while grandfather uh, babysits the little son. So the, the son got sick and grandpa practiced kwasha on him uh, because he cannot uh, read the Western medicines. So what is kwasha and why leads Americans to follow also against the Chinese father in the movie? So I will pass on to Yu Hui to explain more about this topic. Thank you. Thank you, Senda. So for my part, um, I will be giving you guys a short definition of what kwasha is and also a summary of the whole movie plot so that it will be easier for you guys to follow through our analysis later on. So for those who don't know what Gua Sha is, it's actually a traditional Chinese medical treatment whereby the skin is being scraped to produce light bruising. Alright, so these are more photos of the after effect of Gua Sha. So actually one look at it, um, if you do not have any prior knowledge about what Gua Sha is, <coughs> it can be easily misunderstood as injuries or even stronger words such as abuse may come out in your mind. And this is very true for our case study where the word abuse is heavily misused throughout the whole movie plot. So what I actually mean by that? To answer this, I'll provide you with a quick overview of the whole movie. So at the very beginning of the movie here, the father who is the main character, his son actually got into a fight with the boss son. And when his son refuses to apologize to the boss son, he actually hit him in public. And this was seen as a totally unnecessary action from the boss point of view as you find that kids actually got into fight very frequently and adults <coughs> shouldn't take it too seriously sometimes. So this is a very crucial scene as um, 
the father was kind of being portrayed like a very violent person by nature. And this, this scene is very crucial in our analysis later on. So how did this whole issue actually started was, um, the son was actually seeking some medical treatment um, in the hospital. And while the doctors were examining him, they realized some bruises on his back. And without any hesitation, they actually notified the social worker to protect the child from what they assume to be child abuse. But it's actually not the case because um, those bruises are just the gua sha treatment um, that was done personally by his own grandfather. So of course, this came to a shock to the parents as they couldn't <coughs> accept the false accusation that was made on them. This eventually leads to a hearing session that was held. And during this hearing session, um, pictures such as this were actually brought up as evidences of what they assumed to be child abuse. And um, this whole hearing session was very disadvantageous towards the father's point of view because um, especially the fact that gua sha is not a legal form of medical treatment in America as it is not found in any of the American medical textbooks. This case was eventually brought up to the court and during the court session, more evidences and witnesses were actually brought up and all this proved to be very fatal towards um, the father's point of view as he was being portrayed in a very negative light such as being hot-tempered and violent. And this was made worse by his own attitude throughout the whole court session whereby he was seen very agitated which further convinced the judge that he is violent by nature. This eventually leads him to losing the lawsuit in the end actually. So but fortunately for him, his <coughs> boss, which is also his best friend, actually went down to um, personally to China to, exp uh, to have this first-hand experience of what gua sha treatment is. And upon experiencing it, he realized that it's actually not harmful. Um, instead, it's actually um, useful. So, uh, with the boss help, um, the family actually got reunited in the end. So um, keeping all these events in mind, uh, I would like to pass on the time to Dashana, who will give you analysis of these events in greater detail in professional communication context. Dashana. Thank you, Hui. I'll now take you through the uh, series of events that actually caused the lawsuit and what actually had caused the Americans to think that the father actually caused child abuse. So I'll do the analysis based on the three pointers on the slides. Moving on to the first uh, pointer, which is high context versus low context uh, miscommunication. So now deviating back to the very first scene in the movie, where the father actually hits the son in public, um, this actually shows that uh, shows the very strong Chinese values ingrained in him, because it's actually very important to respect and show face to your superiors and maintain harmony. So according to the Chinese perspective, the father actually did it so he can um, show his boss some respect. But of course, from the boss's perspective, he finds it that it's actually totally unnecessary to hit the child in public. So now this can actually be analyzed in um, two different ways. One way would, would be that um, the difference in upbringing of children in China, Chinese context as well as the American context, whereby the Americans actually have a softer upbringing as compared to the Chinese, who actually um, emphasize more on discipline as well as tough love, you could say. Moving on, this, this scene is actually crucial at the trial itself where <coughs> the judge is actually expecting him to give uh, solid evidence that it was not child abuse. However, um, the father actually becomes very emotional throughout the entire scene um, and, 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 and instead of providing evidence, he goes on to say how much he loves his son which was totally uh, very unnecessary. So, from the American point of view, there was no direct evidence placed on the table and so they could not buy uh, the father's powerful performance, as they call it. So from the Asian perspective, the Asian mode of communication is often very implicit and indirect as compared to the American um, mode of communication, which is often very direct and explicit. Moving on to the next point is individualism versus collectivism. <coughs> now, as mentioned earlier in the movie, the grandfather was the one who actually practiced gua sha on his grandchild. However, the father actually takes the blame for it. Now. From the Chinese culture, um, individualism, individualism isn't actually very important, whereas um, it's actually very important for them to respect <coughs> their elders as well as um, remove and uh, decrease their pains involved. 
Also, Denmark do not quite understand why the father would actually take the blame for his grandfather instead. Moving on to the next point is task orientation versus social orientation. Now, this scene is actually the climax of the entire film, whereby the prosecutor actually criticizes the Chinese culture in court. So, the Chinese classical book, also known as Journey to the West, is considered from a very negative point of view, and, it's, and he also criticizes the Chinese culture heavily. And so, of course, the father he got very emotional at the court itself, and he also became very violent, and again portraying him in a very violent manner. So this actually shows the very task-oriented nature of um, the Americans who just simply wanted to win the case despite their wicked ways of going against um, the, the Chinese culture. And finally, towards the end of the movie, um, the, boss is, the boss actually goes to China to experience Gua Sha, and he finds out that Gua Sha is not painful, and in fact it's very useful in curing many diseases. So from this, we can actually tell that the Americans actually needed some sort of direct evidence or some sort of direct representation of themselves in order for them to believe that, that Gua Sha is actually just a medical treatment and not child abuse. So, um, and also because they did not have any evidence of Gua Sha in the American textbooks. So how can these events be prevented in the future? I will now let Hai Chuan to explain that to you guys. Thank you. So, in this film, this poor father loses his child and wife, but he can absolutely avoid such fate if he knows how to control his temper and know the way how to communicate with other people about his own country's culture. So, the audience here is the judge, and the whole case happens on the court, and court is the serious place of justice, and how can people... So, if he can calm down and uh, say, and even be more a little bit accounting like obviously lawyer, then there will be there won't be any chance for them to break in. So the attitude is very important in communication. It greatly influences how other people uh, think of you. For example, when you are going to see the parents of your girlfriend, you have better to behave a little bit humble. Otherwise uh, they won't think you are the reliable person you hand your daughter to hand, hand over their daughter to you. Then Let's review how this father uh, explained Gua Sha to the Americans. So, this is Gua Sha, a traditional Chinese medicine treatment, used for curing all kinds of diseases. For thousands of years, Chinese medicine has recognized that human has seven genes and eight minds. For example, it's like small streams that run into river and return to sea. A person's body has invisible but very complex system of life network, just like computer network. And also the human chi from Dantian finally goes through Dantian. It's the same principle. So we notice that here is a lot of jargon like qi jin ba mai and uh, qi Dantian. These are also very deep word to Chinese as well. So how can him use these two explain things which is harder to understand? <coughs> so the context here is intercultural uh, communication. So when we are doing this, we have to we had better to bear in mind that our uh, cultural background is different, and uh, you had better to be tolerant and patient and say the most basic things, and do not assume that your own country's culture is popular. It's not popular for everyone, so people will be uh, thanks for to your patience and know uh, your country's culture better. Then. The purpose is to explain what is Gua Sha. So who did finally uh, successfully persuade the officer um, that Gua Sha is not an uh, abuse? It's the boss. So how he did uh, successfully did that? He actually uh, went to China as, and uh, experienced Gua Sha by himself. Then showed the uh, scrapping scratch to the officer. Then um, proved that it's not an abuse because it's not hurt at all and even makes him feel a little bit relaxed. So this is actually a kind of non-verbal communication. And uh, this is actually the process of communicating by sending and receiving the word wordless information. And uh, we know uh, human are uh, animal <coughs> of feeling, a picture, a gesture, a action, or even a scene can tell more than simply words. So, uh, this guy, this boss is clever, and just like the famous Chinese 
a philosopher Lao Tzu said that truth doesn't have to be proven by words. It's the same thing. Okay, so the interpersonal communication is not difficult at all. Um, if you bear in mind what your PA say, purpose, audience, and context is, and uh, find the best way to deliver your information, then there won't be any difficulty for your friend to understand better about your own conscious culture. So let's pass time to Chi Yi to make a summary of, of our own presentation. Hey, thank you, Aishwan. So, what can we learn from this movie and apply to our multicultural workplace? So, before that, I'll be giving a brief summary of the link point that has been brought up by my various groupmates earlier on, and also talk about Singapore multicultural workplace, which I believe will be very relevant to all of us as we enter the workplace in the very near future, and also how to apply this knowledge into good use. So, first, the PAC model that was brought up. Okay, this is an effective building block for effective communication, and purpose can be to inform or to persuade. Audience refer to the characteristics of the target audience that you are speaking to, such as different education background, different age group, or even different culture. Different form of characteristics will require you to use different type of communication to communicate. Lastly, it will be the context in terms of time context, as well as the company culture that I'm talking about. Next will be the high context versus the low context. For countries such as Korea and Japan, their culture is mainly high context, where they tend to be not so direct when they're speaking and they tend to think of their words to use so as to achieve <coughs> social harmony and to save face for their bosses or their superior. Whereas for their counterpart in, Je in America and Germany, where the culture is more of low context, where they, are, where they prefer to be more direct and they prefer debates, hence they rely heavily on verbal communication as compared to a Japanese or Korean who use more of non-verbal cues. Next will be being task oriented task orientation and social orientation. For organizations such who are heavily on high task orientation, they will tend to want to achieve their goal as soon as possible, whereas for organizations with high social orientation, they will tend to be care more about their workers' welfare and their well-being. <coughs> Next will be indiv individualism and collectivism. For countries such as America and Germany, they tend to, be, they tend to prefer their own freedom, own rights and own achievement as compared to countries such as Japan and Korea, where they prefer to make choices based on group decision. As there's a Japanese saying, let's go, a new deck get neck that stick up, get pounded down, as can compared to the American saying, let's say, stand on, on your own two feet. So from these two say, you can see the drastic difference in the two countries' culture. So let's talk about Singapore. Singapore currently now has 3.6 million workforce working, and out of this, one third belong to foreigners. Employment pass refer to professionals such as executive and managers, whereas for S pass holder, they refer to mid level skills such as nurses, whereas for work permit, they refer largely to construction worker and domestic helper who are unskilled. Therefore, it will be inevitable for us to be working with people of a different culture background as we enter the workforce. So, how can we apply our knowledge to good use? Firstly, we should always clarify before jumping to conclusion. Different culture background will mean different concept of time different concept of value, and these are often portrayed by languages. Ta taking an example, for a worker from co collectivist, collectivist countries such as China, they will tend to find it offensive when you do not seek approval from other people when you're doing, making major decisions, even though it could be just for formality's mm -hmm. sake. Whereas for their counterpart from America, they will tend to make decisions on their own and are far less likely to consult when making decisions. Hence, without proper communication, this will lead to conflict. Therefore, it would be wise to I out these differences as well as possible and to find a way that is both mutually agreeable to two things. Next, <coughs> we need to be respectful and accommodating to each other religion. For example, there are religions that require midday prayers or worship at particular dates. You could always argue that the project deadline should have priority over these religious practices. But religion is something that is deeply personal and unless you can respect your co-worker belief, you will not get their 100% engagement at work. If they may even feel that you are stepping on their rights. Hence, doing more about each other culture will go a long way into fostering deeper working relationship with one another and you can celebrate each other culture for a start, such as Hari Raya, Chinese Union or Deepa Bali, just to name a few. So I hope that this presentation will be helpful to you all. Thank you.